today we're going to go through the parts and components and that go into a budget basement hydropower setup. Uh, for this hydropower setup we're going to have a Pelton turbine because we just happen to have a mountain spring which is located about 500 feet up the mountain and has a total head of, well, quite a bit, I think it's around 80 feet. Uh, so it's a gentle slope. Uh, it has around 25 psi by the time it gets to the point at which we have the uh, water tapped and it has about 12 gallons per minute of flow um, which is pretty adequate and so for, for that case we're going to be using a Pelton which is known as an impulse turbine. Um, impulse turbines do really good with high pressure low flow as opposed to um, reaction turbines which we don't have here that would be something similar to like a water wheel and that does really well with just basically right at a stream um, getting a high flow of water turning the reaction turbine. Um, and here is our Pelton turbine. You know, got it on an online auction. It's around 100 bucks. It's a little pricey, but really that's about as cheap as it's going to get from what I could find. Um, mounted to the Pelton turbine is our motor arbor, so we can take it, connect it to our motor, or actually our generator. Uh, so it's a valuable component right there. You gotta be careful with these guys. They're cast aluminum, most of them, and if you drop them, they will break. <laughs> and that would suck. So, here's our motor. It's a treadmill motor. It's, it's well, from what we can tell, it's pretty adequate for the job. Um, we talked about this in an earlier video, like how to get the RPMs to volt output. Um, one thing I hadn't mentioned, though, and most of you know this, but some of you may not, you connect any motor to a battery without a diode and you will get what you would expect a motor. Now this is not going to make a very good generator. One simple solution and one and in most cases you're going to need is a, is a diode. And let's just put you know in line in the correct direction which is discussed in our electrical topics section of the website and now it can be a generator and when you're when you're generating sufficient voltage with the right RPM, it'll start pumping power into the battery and you'll have uh, what you're looking for. Um, another component you're going to need for most likely for your hydro setup is some way of uh, when you finally do sufficiently charge the battery, if you are doing a battery setup instead of just like a direct load such as a light or something of that nature, you're going to probably need a battery in between the two, but when that gets charged you're going to need a way of separating the motor and the battery or diverting it to another load. Uh, for that, we have these great, um, this is a load diversion setup, it'll divert it. Uh, this is Xantrex, and this can be used for solar and everything, but it'll work for this. And when the battery reaches like 13.5 volts, you can divert it to something else, which is pretty useful. And that way you don't uh, burn out your battery or motor, an important thing to have. Uh, they have, they have a quite a few different versions. They have uh, load diverters down to 20 bucks that people build with simple circuits. You can build yourself. Um, okay, that's the electric side of things. Pretty simple. Now, onto the mounting side of things. Uh, we already have a hole in the top of this. This is our case, actually. I should mention this. Uh, it's an old cooler. We took out of the waste cycle. These guys aren't very recyclable anyway. And it was going to the dump, landfill. And makes a good case, allows the water to spill out the front, a little bit of slope, and uh, keeps the motor away from the water. Uh, it's basically all it needs to do, and it's strong enough to hold the weight of this guy. I mean, generator. <laughs> I gotta remember that. It's been repurposed. Um, and just mount it in position with a couple bolts. We built some simple brackets out of uh, angle iron, but you know, get creative here. Ah, oh, the nice boring experience of bolting something together on film. Gotta love it. Yep. And, you know, of course, depending on what motor you're using, it's gonna be different. Um, for an Amtec, you're gonna have a nice flange, usually, on the front side. That makes it a lot easier. Um, for this, we had to build little brackets, and there's these little L brackets. We have to be very careful, though, when we put the, the bolt in the side of this motor, because if you go too far, 
it will crack the magnet, and that would really suck. And it would be kind of nice big 30 pound paperweight. So we did measure it first. You're gonna also want, when this is complete, to uh, put some kind of rain protection over this. We're just gonna use probably like a half a bucket or something. There, that's a position. All right. Now we're just gonna temporarily put this in place. There you go. Once you get it, you know, you get it in place, you're gonna have to uh, get some kind of straight edge, such as this, and maybe a straight edge and a level. And then you can look up different calculations of this. You wanna get your, uh, where your pipe uh, sprays on this turbine to be lined up just so in the center and use a straight edge and mark center. We had actually already done this on this guy. So, we're going to drill a hole right here and there it goes. I like drill through plastic, it's really making it easy. Alright. Get the turbine back into position. And for this, we have a little rigid piece of one inch PVC, a uh, threaded metal adapter, and these caps. And we're going to start out with the smallest jet size and work our way up. We have different caps to see which works ideal but we have uh, two to choose from. Uh, between 8th and 3 16ths will probably be where we're going to end up. Um, and it's not exactly the ideal solution because you usually have a really tapered nozzle, but for this amount of flow and you know, kind of just an experimentation phase, we're just going to uh, taper drill it down to get a little bit of a good water velocity there. And you can see it lines up pretty good. And you have to get a nice rigid fit. Clears the uh, turbine. And uh, on to our next video for the actual uh, positioning and testing of the uh, unit.